Elegance. I'm here with Nick Kleinsmith today, and today's fashion I'm going to be wearing today is from Clothes Mentor of Lehigh Valley. And Nick's going to be talking with us all about kind of things that will be at his new store location out in St. Peter's Village, just outside of Pencil, uh, just outside of Philadelphia. So, when I was there visiting with you, I was checking out the location, and here is our first picture of the area. And is there anything you'd like to talk to us about this picture? Or anything you'd like to point out to anybody? Well, on the left, you're going to see the inn. And then there's going to be the tent where they have outside dining. And next to that is my little shop, a one-story building there. And then to the right of that would be the bakery. And it's an old 1800s mining town that was kind of used as a tourist destination once all the industry left. And it's still kind of a destination spot even today. Hmm. Well, in the area, you can definitely see how big that you can explore. There's all that acreage. It's a lot. And here's another picture closer up, and it's just past your shop, but down further. Can you point out the different buildings that are in that area? Yeah, so on the, the far left, um, you can see the, the fencing of the bakery, and then you've got the antique store. It's the next building up. And then you've got a holistic shop after that. And then there's an old pinball arcade, which is really cool. It has all kinds of old, um, old-time games and things in there. And there's also an ice cream parlor up there. And then on the right side of the street coming back towards us, you've got the winery, and then you've got an organic hair salon, and then next to that is the woodworker. And we also have a blacksmith up on the hill. I think I was up there visiting one time. Really neat stuff inside. And then here's your place. Yep, that's my place. And the gnome out there is Larry. He's my Oh, mascot. I don't get a name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's like a four-foot-tall gnome. They make him in Germany. He's a sturdy fellow. And here's the other end of the town. Now, the one building that's closest to us, that's the arcade, if I'm correct. Yeah, on the, on the far right there. And also you have the, uh, the ice cream parlor right there, too. Oh, I didn't know that was oh, okay. I didn't know that. And here's another egg direction that's you can see up the side, which is important. There's really good parking for people. Sometimes yeah. people have ex they're concerned about good parking when they want to visit a destination. So I found that very good to have up there. And here's a nice close up of the antique arcade, but I like to look point out behind you is the nice creek. That's the French Creek, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then here is, is kind of like a side view of the parking area where you can go along and you can shop around at um, in the area. And then when I was visiting your area, I went along kind of like the creek, and I, this is where I started. And here's another side view of the creek and then the, by the bridge. So I'm just kind of like taking a, a tour of the area. Yeah, there's a lot of really nice hiking trails in the back there, and there's um, and it splits off there in... in three different directions, and then if you follow any of those, they split off in even more directions. So it's kind of easy to turn around back there, but it is really fun to hike around. There's a lot of swimming holes and um, little pit mines are back in the 1800s. Oh, wow. There's actually a quarry in the way back. Um, it's now pretty much a lake, and they harvested this special stone called black granite, and uh, NASA was buying it because it's thermal resistant, so it absorbs a lot of heat energy. I don't know if they used it in their platform or what they used it for, but um, the place went bust in the 80s, so uh, they don't mine it anymore. But if you find it, it's remnants. There's, you know, all these stones that you just kind of cut and dumped, and there's entire, like, mountains of them. And, and the weird thing is if you get near the mounds, it gets, like, 5 degrees, maybe 10 degrees colder. Oh, wow. Which is interesting. Have you been on any of the directions? I know going left is what we're going to be going to shortly. But have you been straight or going towards the right at all? Yeah, I've been, I've been in every direction. Oh, okay. <laughs> you've got to turn around many times, too. Yeah, it's a big area. But here's a nice view of the... Just walk it down towards the left side of the creek. And I, I just enjoy looking at all the nice rocks. Yeah, there's spray paint on areas, which, unfortunately, I wish people wouldn't do that. Yeah, if anybody's watching this and knows a good eco-friendly way to get the spray paint off the, oh, off the rocks, let me know. Let oh. us know, because we'd love to get it off. And uh, some of, the, some of the, the, the markings can be pretty funny, but some are kind of ridiculous, and it obviously isn't great for the natural scene. Yeah, it's inappropriate of some degree, I, my opinion, but 
everyone has their own opinion. And here's another nice view of it. And I believe there's there's another variation I took of it. It's a little bit bigger, so you can kind of see how when I pull back, it's really nice. For a lot of Berks Countyans, um, Hopewell Furnace is very close to the village. If you've ever been there. And um, it's just down the street from Birdsboro. And then south of the village, you have Route 23. So just to kind, of, kind of give people an idea where this place is. It may be like 15 minutes outside of Birdsboro. Okay. It's still in Chester County. It's in Chester it's County. It's in northern Chester County. It's almost right on the border of Berks. Oh, okay. And then what are the buildings back here, if you can kind of recognize them a little bit? Because um, you're following the creek, and that's where all the shops are, which is really neat. Yeah, um, there you can see the windows in the center there. That's uh, Healing Spirit Cafe, the holistic shop in oh, town. Okay, and that's, that's, right. that's their little um, porch pavilion thing there. That's pretty cool. It's probably the best view of all the buildings in the village because you got like a, a pretty good wide angle view of the, uh, the rocks. I was kind of going for that when I was hiking there. I wanted to kind of gauge the overall viewpoint. That's just really pretty. I love this area. And then... We're coming upon here at this viewpoint. What is this water? Is this just like a little dam that was man made or? It's possible. But I don't know what it was. I don't know. They, they, they fitted it around with a lot of the local stuff. Um, but that's the most popular swimming hole, and that's right behind my shop. So a lot of people. There, there normally is a rope, unless. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they got the rope in there? Yeah, and people swim in there all the time. What exactly is a little building that's next to the. Uh, the water area. So, so that's the creek house. Um, oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, you have to jump over boulders to get to it. You have to cross the creek to get to it. It used to be the dancing hall back in the day. And, um, yeah, they, they enclosed it, and now it's just kind of a hangout destination spot. But it's uh, it's not necessarily uh, anybody in particular in there. Okay, so it, people can't go in there at all? or is just, it a, just the owner and his friends. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't... You can't didn't have, have a business in there because, you, you know... You have to jump across boulders. Yeah, it, so. it's when you're there, you definitely have to be sure-footed because it's slippery. And I was there on a kind of a rainy day, so it didn't. So the rocks are get very, very slippery. But I just thought this picture was really pretty. With there, I found a lot of unique uh, trees growing up against the rocks to create really pretty or just picturesque areas to look at, and I wanted to share with everybody. And they say it, um, this why there's such a large deposit of boulders is from an old glacier that was oh. receding and just kind of dumped them off in that spot. And you see those around the area where you just have this field of boulders, and this one happens to have a creek running through it, which is French Creek. And here's another area. You know, they have like a little picnic uh, table for people to sit down and enjoy their lunch or whatever they're, they're snacking, but it's also spray painted too, which is unfortunate. But hey. It, we can get it off and get it off. Now behind here, your shop, but you can see your shop in the distance in the middle of the picture. And mm -hmm. then up to the right is the inn. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see, like, it, when you're there walking around, it's just a beautiful view. And what's the building next to your shop? It's the bakery. That's the bakery, OK. There's just another, just a little, a pulled away variation of it. So you can kind of see a little bit more. And there's a nice clear view of the area. I walked a little bit further in the creek, and you can see their porch. So when you're up there on the porch, you can look down. It's just really nice. Yeah, the, the end there, that's one of the oldest buildings in the village. And it's actually part of the Underground Railroad. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's supposedly really haunted. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've got food and a lot of live music on the weekends, and then they've got... Um, you know, you can rent rooms and stuff in there. Is it haunted of any kind? Like, have any no, there's a lot of reports that it being haunted, oh. especially the basement, where, which is part of the Underground Railroad. So there's a lot of rumors of that, with that building in particular, which I think is kind of cool. Interesting. So people, I guess, whoever enjoy ghost hunting or energy seeking, that's something they might want to check out. Yeah, if, you, if you're into ghosts, you might want to rent a room, because some people actually have done that for that place, just to see if they can get any kind of uh, experience there. Thankfully, uh, no, no activity in my shop, which is next door. And then up, I took a picture here at top, so you can kind of see a nice overview of if you're sitting on the porch, which is next to Nick's shop, you can kind of get an idea. And then right down here below is where I'll be walking out across the French Creek, and then Nick's shop is kind of up to your right side, and then you can kind of see that's yeah, a You're really mostly seeing the bakery there, and um, they have a, a, a second story um, outside dining area there, which is really nice, and they have... Um, Gourmet pizza nights and uh, bring your own booze and stuff like that. So you know, it's, and they have live music 
and um, it's, it's pretty nice thing on a Friday night. Most people sit out there and enjoy the creek at night. And then here back to your shop and your new, what was the name again? Larry. Larry. Larry the Gnome. So yeah, my, my shop back in the day before it was used as a commercial thing was the garage for the, uh, the village. So they had to park, you know, like the old Model T fours and horse and buggies. I mean, it's used for like many, many different things other than that. But like its initial purpose was kind of like a garage storage area. Back, the, the community was um, uh, back from the 1800s it was kind of developed from that? Yeah, it was founded by uh, Mr. Knauer. And uh, the Knauer family owned the village up until kind of recently. And oh, wow. he had a lot of industry in the, uh, in the village. And here you are inside. And it's just a nice little shop. And on your left, on your left side, what do you have on your rack over there? On the left side, yeah. we have various CBD products of different local companies. Um, most of them are actually from Reading. We have one from Gettysburg. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, we went for organic, higher quality stuff. And uh, the one company is actually owned by a retired Philadelphia Eagles player, and um, he's got a good product, definitely. What can you explain a little bit about the CBD? Because I personally don't know too much about it. Can you kind of give a brief overview of kind of how it's used in that format? Like it's, I guess, liquid drops? Yeah, that's the internal format. It's the most common application. but. Yeah, so um, CBD is a cannabinoid from the hemp plant. You also can get it from the, the marijuana plant, but that is federally illegal, so you can get it legally from the hemp plant, which is what everybody's doing. And that's why everybody and the grandmother is selling it now, because it's completely legal. I think in 49 states, I think like maybe Idaho or some state like that, CBD is illegal, but the rest of the country can buy it, you know, conscious free, I guess. But <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, I mean, you've got internal applications, you've got external applications of, of the, the CBD. And uh, CBD is actually just one type of cannabinoid out of a whole family of them. Um, one you might be seeing a lot of is called CBG. And, um, yeah, that's, that's just one of many cannabinoids. But CBD is the one they ran with, and that's one that everybody's marketing towards people. But it definitely has um, a lot of good health benefits. And... Um, it's helping a lot of people. Not everybody, but it's helping a good portion of them to different varying degrees. But yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing, especially for the, the animals, the pets, the dogs and cats, because you know, really, a lot of them respond really well to it, and it's nice to see that. So what would you say are your three best uses for the oil, for the most common best uses? uses? Um, yeah, a lot of people see benefits in anxiety, stress depression, neurological type stuff like that. Um, Sleeping is another big factor. And then uh, pain management. Now you can do internals for pain management, but you also can do uh, externals for pain management. And that tends to be the best format. And um, the externals are really good for like a certain spot that's ailing you, like your, your back or an elbow or something like that. And, um, and you just apply it directly to the skin? Are you directly to the forehead. Forehead? Oh. No, okay. <laughs> just, that's, that's an old commercial. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, no, um, yeah, you can apply it to wherever it hurts. And, um, okay. you know, there's different quality products out there. Like I said, everything we have is grown in the USA. It's organic, uh, mostly local companies. Um, you are seeing a lot of the hemp coming from like, Oregon and Colorado. We're going to start really seeing it come from places like PA. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, this area was known as a hemp boom town back in the day. And you can actually still find street names and things like that around here with hemp in the name, hmm. or like uh, like Hempton, um, it used to be called Hempton supposedly back in the day, and then when they made everything illegal, marijuana and hemp, but they're essentially the same plant, they kind of threw the baby out with the bathwater by yeah. getting rid of hemp because it was such a useful crop. And some states even had laws where if you had so many acreage and you were a farm, you had to grow a certain portion as hemp because, you know, it's textiles, it's, you know, it's rope, it's medicine, it's food for humans and cows. Um, you know, and then you've got the medicinal properties of it, too. And make lo and making that lotion? I guess you put the drops in lotion? And you can make a lotion out of it. There's creams or salves. There's balms. You can do anything like that with it, in which we have all those formats. Um, but then you see internals, which are in droppers, and you put them under the tongue. They call it sublingually. You hold it for about 30 seconds, and you swallow it. And then it comes in. we got an elderberry syrup, honey, capsules, gummy bears. There's a lot of different formats for it, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't even know what it was, you know, three years ago, and then people kept calling me at my shop in Fleetwood when I was there, and 
it asked me if I had CBD, and I was like, what is that? Yeah, so. I've, been, I've been looking at it a little bit here and there, getting more information on it. It's just a lot to take in and learn and be aware of, and know how to use it properly. So. Yeah, so I'm, I'm by no means a, a CBD only person because I, like I said I was almost forced to sell that stuff just because people kept calling up and asking about it and so I, I found um, Karma Pharma based out of Gettysburg and I used theirs first on myself to see if I noticed anything and had other people try it and once I started getting good reports I'm like well I'll, I'll sell it and um, but yeah you may want to make sure it's grown the USA and it's organic because there's a lot of cheap stuff you know, yeah. from China and elsewhere, and you have like gas station CBD that you're seeing. You know, it's like don't don't waste your money and time on that stuff. No. Get, get the real deal, which is going to be a little more expensive. But the prices of CBD have been coming down because you know, there's a lot more competition, and you've got a lot more people growing it now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a hot item as far as hemp crops go around here. I mean, the, the Amish and Mennonite are itching to farm that stuff, and. Um, so it's it's going to be a, a boon for a lot of farmers because you have like the tobacco crop. Yep, I see that a lot It's been going here. down. Oh, really? It's, oh, yeah, oh, people aren't price. smoking as oh, much. Yeah. So, yeah. And places like PA and Kentucky and, and, and certain states where it was more of a cash crop, it's not so much anymore. And hemp is um, up and coming, as it should be, because it's very useful, way more useful than tobacco ever was. And, um, yeah, so you're, you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of people farming it around here. I just hope they do it organically because we don't want any more toxic sprays in our, in our soil and breathing that stuff the, in. So The process to become an organic farm is heavily involved, all the license and all everything they have to go through, but it's, in the long run, it's worth it. So I appreciate when a farm decides to go organic. I applaud them. They, it's a lot involved, and I, I look forward to more farms becoming more organic. Help the planet and help the environment and help good food and... Help, you, help yourself. Yeah, I mean, really. It, yeah, um, and there's a lot of farmers around here that don't have the money to become certified organic. Because last time I checked, I think it was like was it over a thousand dollars per crop. You know, so if you have a farm that grows ten different crops and they want it all certified organic, you're looking at ten thousand dollars, which a lot of farmers don't want to necessarily spend. So it, you got local certifications. You got farmers that um, may not be USDA organic, but they're organic. They might even be better than organic, which is called biodynamic, and there's other terms where they really get into the quality and health of the plants, you know, the nutrition levels of the soil and, and the plant has, you know, from it. And yeah, so um, you know, like, eat, eat more greens and um, yeah, I love eat more greens. Yeah, he's good. he's and um, Leesport and a few other farmers markets. He's got like the best greens around. He's not so very organic, but he's organic. You know, so talk to your farmer and just develop that relationship. It's a natural thing. Well. Yeah. The next picture I have here is some a close-up of some of your herbs, and this is the easy being one. What can you tell us about how this is best used for your, your customers? So that is our anti-inflammatory blend. So we have six different kinds, and they're capsule format. They're all organic, and um, in that formula in particular, we have turmeric. We've got white willow bark, which is the natural form of aspirin. Oh. Um, that's how they discovered it because they, it's probably the story is they saw a bunch of bears gnawing on white willow bark trees and um, they're like, well, why is that? And they, you know, took the bark and found aspirin and that's what you got. But so you have white willow bark in there, you've got black pepper, which helps absorb the, the curcumin from the turmeric. So a lot of people use curcumin supplements and that is the yellow oranges pigment of the turmeric and that's very anti-inflammatory and it's very good for your liver, it's very good for your brain, there's a lot of health benefits to it. So, you know, it's a whole spectrum of really strong and healthy, good for you, anti-inflammatory herbs. So you got a headache, icky joints, anything like that, it's good stuff. Well, here I also have an easy, I have some different teas you have and there's a couple very different ones here. There's the peppermint, there's easy breathe, they're up in front you can read and what, with your teas, how many do you have in a box, roughly? Like, how many? All of our teas are loose leaf, organic, and boxed. They're kind of, we have them available at the store. We don't sell them online, which is a big part of our business is our online sales. And um, so, yeah, we, we have them. And, um, yeah, so we have various teas. They come and go. Thank you. Next we have here is the well-being. And can you explain to us about how these are used for your clients? 
So the well-being is our overall wellness blend. So you've got a whole spectrum of herbs, which are called tonic herbs, which are good at tonifying or strengthening the whole system. So you have herbs like ashwagandha, which is a very popular Indian herb from India. And um, it's probably my number one herb out of all the herbs I've used because it's multifaceted. You've got immunological boosting properties to it. You've got hormone um, boosting properties where it helps your, your endocrine system, which are all the different glands produce hormones, like your, your, like your thyroid, things like that. And um, it just is a really good, well-rounded herb. And that's the major component in that blend, but you have other herbs in there. Um, kind of like the easy being of turmeric, so it has anti-inflammatory properties. So if you're inflamed, which a lot of people are, chronically inflamed, which means you're puffy and in pain, um, you know, it helps take that pressure off the body. Yeah. And uh, you've got ginkgo in there, which a lot of people um, know, you know, circulation. A lot of college students would use it for circulation and supposedly help them get better test scores. But there are other properties to it. Like it's very resistant to pollution and harsh environments. So harsh environments, you know, like, like uh, uh, f f or not Fukushima, I guess Fukushima it would be one. Uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, when the, the, the nukes were dropped on those two cities, the only real plant to survive in those cities were the ginkgo trees. Well, they're one of the most oldest trees that are left from like, like the dinosaur era? Supposedly, but yeah, I mean, it's, they're, they're an ancient know. species, and it kind of, yeah. there's a reason they're that old and still around. So, I mean, they survived nuclear blasts, so yeah, they're, they're pretty potent. And another one we have here is the Mighty Immunity. How is this one used for your clients? So that is our most popular blend, Ah. and um, it does what it sounds like. It's very good for your immune system, in particular, uh, nipping a cold in the butt before it starts. So if you feel like you're starting to get a scratch throat, starting to feel like a cold creeping on, starting to feel a little run down, if you can nip it in the butt, and that's where it's, it really shines out. And um, you can use it if you are sick. It's definitely going to help. Um, but it's basically a preventative measure, and it's to take it when you need it blend. You know, you're going on, you know, to an airport, not an airplane, there's all kinds of people, you know, and there. Oh, yeah. Or you're going to a doctor's office, or your, your family members are sick and you're not yet. Things like that, you can use it as preventative. Um, but you have echinacea, golden seal, burdock root, uh, just a whole really good spectrum of, of herbs in there for the immune system. And then here's more of the teas. It looks like two people. Now, and now here are some other products you have. Is there your CBD? Yeah, this is our CBD rack. So, so the far uh, left bottom corner, you can see our doggy treats, which are really good for, you know, um, the occasional usage, so if, if a dog is anxious, car rides, um, thunderstorms, fireworks, things like that, really helps calm them down. And uh, we've got a lot of regulars for those. And next to that, we have a pack of gummy bears from a uh, company in Exeter, actually, um, My CBD Remedies. They have good product. And uh, I won't go through all of them, but you know, we have creams, which My CBD Remedies also makes the creams, and they have their essential oils. And then in the upper rack, we have, on the left, we have My CBD Remedies Creams. And then in the middle, we have Clean Remedies, which is owned by the Philadelphia Eagles player I was telling you about, the retired one. And on the far right, we have the Humboldt Healing Co., which is based out of Moton, and they have a really good uh, salve, and they also have a, a tincture for internal usage. Hmm. Thank you. And then here are some... So, we've got more of the doggy treats. You can see, I have them everywhere because they are really popular. I almost probably sell more for animals than I do humans. <laughs> People they, have been really take great care of their animals. It's almost like new, like their children. Yeah, they'll spend more on their pets than they will themselves. But if you want to go back to that one for a second, um, the middle, well, I guess in this one, it's the upper, upper rack on the top there. That, those are products from another herbalist named Ruthie, and she actually lives just up the road in the village. She has a lot of her... Uh, her tinctures and uh, creams and ointments for various usage. She also has uh, her Fuego cider, which is apple cider vinegar with a lot of add-ons to it. Well, thank you. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and, oh no. I was looking for the non nonprofit that you like to support and that you've had a very interesting story with it. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess the one I'm going to support is the uh, the pig placement network. Um, so you know, people buy the the, the, the teacup pigs, the micro pigs online, and uh, somebody ships them an actual like full grown. You know, like no, it's not full grown yet, but it will grow to be like a full pot belly pig, and uh, they don't know it yet until it starts getting beyond the 
the measurements they were, they were sold on. Yeah, they don't realize it's And they tough. want to get rid of the pig. So places like that will, the Pig Placement Network will take those pigs off your hands and then adopt them out to to somebody, not a butcher, but to somebody who wants as a pet. They're and, they great pets <laughs> of her over the years. I don't know. I've never had one, but uh, they, I met them in Phoenixville at a, at a festival, and uh, they had a, a, a donation can strapped to its back, and it came and was visiting my booth. <laughs> and I looked down, and it's like staring up at me, and uh, I gave it a dollar, and it left. Aww. And, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll support them. They, they seem pretty cool, and. Uh, yeah, don't, don't adopt pigs unless you know it's going to be uh, worth your while. Well, thank you. And in that nighttime, we're in the village. It looks really pretty, so you can stay there all day and have many things, different things to do. So, well, I would like to thank uh, BCTV here for all the things they do. And I'm here with Nick Kleinsmith. And I'd like to also thank Close Mentor of Lehigh Valley for their garment I enjoy to share for my host attire. Until then, I'd like to thank everyone and take care.